I was probably one of the sickest that they've had coming through the hospital. In 2017, I got to represent my country in, in both wheelchair rugby league and in wheelchair tennis. I still pinch myself for the opportunity every day. I'm Stefan, I'm 26 years old, and I was born with spina bifida. So spina bifida, it's a skeletal uh, birth defect. Doctors said basically I wouldn't have any chance of living past 24 hours because I was just too sick. When I was born, I had the head size of, of Jimmy Neutron, basically. Your body, I think, naturally will drain out brain fluid from your head um, and throughout your body. And, and so, unfortunately, that's what my body can't do, and so that's why I've got the machine, uh, the shunt put into my head. It can have a lot of impacts. For me, personally, I can feel my body right on through to my ankles, and unfortunately, I can't feel my feet. I'm a part-time walker, um, if you want to call it that. I can walk short distances. In high school, I didn't feel comfortable very much in my own skin. It was all about trying to fit into the best of my ability, and I really thought to myself, you know, I'm, I'm really different. Like, my upper body's growing um, the way that it should, but unfortunately, my legs are still looking like cricket stumps. Growing up as a kid, I was always kicking around with the footy and, and everything like that. I'm a, I'm a huge West Tigers fan. You know, as I got older and, and understood the, the severity of my disability, I knew that that dream was, was starting to really get further and further away from me. So that's when I, at the age of 12, decided to pick up wheelchair tennis to at least give some sort of hope of becoming an athlete. I was asked to, uh, quite a few insensitive questions in high school and, you know, every single time that, you know, I'd be associated with getting a girlfriend or anything like that, my peers around me would always say, you know, are they, are they also in a, a, a wheelchair? Are they disabled as well? And so that's where I kind of really thought to myself, no, like people with a disability can be in mainstream relationships as well. And it, I, I really took offense to it at the time. I guess the negative kind of thoughts at that time really took over me and, and really swamped me. And, and the conversations I was having with myself was, you know, mate, you're a piece of shit. I was, I was stuck in that cycle for, I'd, I'd say, a good three years. The turning point definitely for me was having a conversation with my tennis coach. We talked about what, what's going on, how I viewed myself, my value to myself, how I thought my value was to the people around me. My tennis coach had exposed me to a simple exercise, really, which is two things that you're grateful for and one thing that you found challenging throughout your day. That, for me, was, was the real kicker. It's definitely helped my mental state in terms of understanding myself better and understanding my limitations as an individual, both physically and mentally, and what I can look to aspire to be like. Wheelchair Rugby League, it, it was just a, a thing that just came about for me in 2013 and I was always looking for the opportunity. It's a bit like Oztag, but in a wheelchair, um, but it still doesn't obviously stop you from smashing into someone and having them fall to the ground. It's a sport that is inclusive, so you don't actually need to have a disability to actually play the sport, which is the best thing. Wheelchair Rugby League has especially made me feel like I belong because I guess it's, it's the closest thing um, with our able-bodied counterparts that we can actually be a part of. So I'm always being included in, in NRL things and I'm able to be surrounded by all the people that I idolised growing up. In 2017, I got to represent my country in, in both wheelchair rugby league and in wheelchair tennis and I couldn't have been any prouder for that year to have occurred. I've also kick-started up a modelling career. I really wanted to start that primarily because of, you know, how I viewed myself growing up as an individual. Um, and I really wanted to recreate the narrative of how the industry really sees models where, you know, they have to be six foot tall and tall, skinny, and, and all these sorts of um, things that a lot of people can't aspire to be like. And so that's where I really want to be able to start those conversations of having disabled models be more featured in mainstream advertisements. <laughs> I was very single for a long time to the point where I was making dinner for two and eating both. 
Brooke is amazing. How she has picked up the perspective of me living with a disability and and, and how she's able to, to aid me and still be able to give me the sense of independence that I still crave as an individual living with a disability is something that you know I love to have and um, she compliments me again so well. <laughs> Apart from the fact that you go for Cronulla, babe. <laughs> We always tend to have the one or two people that kind of look at us where it's like, you know, is that who he's dating? And I always have sort of grin on my face thinking, yeah, that's who I'm dating. That's not my carer. That's my girlfriend. I love you, babe. <laughs> <laughs>